to Les Schwab Tire Center's Outdoor GPS, presented by Fisherman's Marine and Outdoor. Good morning, everyone. It is Saturday, October 20, 25th, 26th, for crying out loud. And we are in the full-blown midst of duck season. Some great hunting opportunities out there. Some decent fishing to still be had. But of course, I don't want y'all to forget, you're watching Les Schwab Tire Center's Outdoor GPS presented to you by Fisherman's Marine and Outdoor. And there's our hotline right there. If you want to give us a call, it's 503-548-6777. Questions, comments, reports like always, we'd love to hear from you. And if you happen to be out in a duck blind somewhere, leave me alone. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'd love to hear from you just so you can tease myself and everyone else on what you're seeing out there. Live reports go to the front of the line, so don't be shy. And if you've been sending photos over, we're going to be showing those photos here in just a couple of minutes. So pay attention, uh, especially if it was a week or two ago uh, that you sent some of those photos in. Now, in this upcoming segment, I actually have a photo to show you. You all know what that means. And my producer, Ryan, the guy that keeps this thing going, uh, has some photos to show as well from down in the central Oregon part uh, where he was chasing some trout around with his father. So we got a couple of reports to share from ourselves as well as a couple of other reports to get out there uh, for all of you that are still focused on chasing Chinook around or Silvers or uh, Chum or just daydreaming about your first opportunity to chase Winter Steelhead, which is not that far away. Get, get prepared, head to Fisherman's, get your gear now, so that in the middle of December, January, that you're not sending us messages going, oh my God, I can't find what I want. You know who you are. Anyways, lots of stuff going on out there. Of course, we're gonna have river levels for you and fish counts like always. Not gonna keep fish counts in much longer, just because uh, the time of year, of course, and the way the migration ultimately ends, right? Uh, but we will have river levels for you. Things are going to change here pretty darn quickly. When we check in with Carly Olson here in a little bit, we're going to find out how much rain we really do have coming this week, which is going to change everything. Not so much for what I'm currently doing, but if you're targeting fish in the tributaries, bays, doesn't matter where you are, this rain that's coming is going to change everything. Now, does that mean for the better? Not always. But for the most part, it really should. So we'll cover that. We'll get some of that information out there for you as well uh, is at least just make sure that you've got some ideas for this upcoming week if you want to get out uh, and have some fun. I'm excited. We have our three days split, unfortunately, if you're a duck hunter uh, here in Oregon, uh, at least in zone one, I should say. Uh, we got that weather coming, so we got something to look forward to towards the end of the week uh, when that does reopen. Special guest in studio, though, for the first time uh, here at Outdoor GPS, we have Jared Goodwin. He is the state coordinator of the Hunter Education Program, and we're going to find out Maybe not even find out, just kind of give you the understanding that getting your youth into the hunting sports is a lot easier than you might think. Now, if you remember, my daughter, who's 12, uh, was going through that process this year, and we ran into a couple of hiccups. Well, it turned out to be on my side. In the end, it's a pretty simple process, but it's absolutely one of the most important things you can do for kids to become successful, confident, ethical, safe, right? When you're talking about getting into the hunting sports, it's not just about going out and learning how to shoot. There's a number of different things that the kids have to understand and know before they get that oh so important bright orange card that my daughter worked so hard to get. And her excitement level when she got that was pretty, pretty impressive. I, at least I was in dad moment. How about that? But this will be a great opportunity to give you that information so that when you start that process, that it'll take a little bit of the edge off and you'll, and you'll see that it's well worth doing. 60 plus years, this program has been up and running and it went from 10 fatalities a year to less than one a year. That's how important hunter education actually is. There's a number of reasons for it, but that's a good one all by itself. So we're going to have that opportunity with Jared uh, in a little bit. After that, though, we're going to check in with my good friend, Big Dave Manners. Now, you all know that when we check in with Dave, he fishes the North Coast, for that matter, all over the place. But today, he's in his backyard uh, in that North Coast area. We'll let him talk about locations if he wishes to. Uh, but it's been a very interesting year, especially in the North Coast, and that all falls down to water, period. There hasn't been any water. Now, if people are struggling in some of the bays, you know, a lot of times that's because there's no fish in there. Until they smell their river that they're ultimately going to, a lot of times they're not going to move all the way up into the bay or make that move to migrate. Pretty simple. I'm not a biologist. 
but I've been around a while, and that's typically what they're looking for, and we have that on our table now. We'll see how things may improve and what he's actually seeing in the North Coast right now real time. So, And he's pretty, pretty darn good at it and loves to share info, so we're going to have that interview uh, with Dave later on in the show uh, to try to get that info out to you. But if you've been sending those photos in, pay attention. Here's a few, and we've got a video for you uh, that somebody sent in as well, so we'll get a chance to check those out as well. But again, if you've been sending photos in, sometimes it takes a week or two uh, to get those photos up. So if you've been waiting to see it, pay attention. Could be today. Uh, first fall Chinook, this is Doug. Uh, that is a coastal fish. Um, I got a good idea, but I'm not going to say nothing. Nice fish too, by the way. Not that big, but I bet you it was delicious. Uh, here's a nice one. Looks like a, a three-pack of silvers above the fall. Uh-huh. Now, I got in trouble about talking about that fishery, uh, so I'm going to talk about it now. Uh, pretty darn cool. When those fish get an opportunity to do with just what they do, 50-plus thousand go over the falls. Pretty cool. Uh, it's just very, very cool fishery. Uh, chrome hog, this is from Kent, uh, summer, summertime fishing right by the mouth of the Sandy. Yep, that's how quick I can pull all those off, everyone. I've seen all the spots. Uh, this is a cool one, too. Okay, that's a sled in the background taking the photo. Good day for silvers. This is from Dell. Uh, yeah, I'd call that a good day. I mean, if I, if I were to go out and go targeting a Chinook right now, it would be silvers, and that's why. Look at that buck right there. That is just a beautiful fish. And if you want to talk about table fare, fall Chinook are great. Don't get me wrong, but they don't eat like a silver does right now, especially when they're in that kind of condition. And in our upcoming reports, we'll have a, a report or two about tributary. Uh, silvers to talk about. Uh, Laura's Rainbow. Uh, trout fishing has been good. We'll have Ryan's uh, report to share as well. Lots of options. Here's another nice Chinook. And then here in a little bit, <laughs> same area as the one I just mentioned, but we won't go there. Uh, Columbia River, Patricia, nice fish. And it uh, looks like we have a video that we're going to show you in a second as well. Now, this is what I'm talking about. September Summer Steelhead. Yeah, very cool. I love the boat too, by the way. That's a tough choice. Here's a good one. This is from Carl. Looks like he's in the midst of fighting a schnook right now. I who that is. I got a better idea. I want to see if there's a flash around there. Yeah, there is. 360s, people. Oh, yeah. No, it's not really, really well. Look how he's keeping his rod just right, everyone. He's, he's done this before. Now, what'd he hook it with? The baby. Turn him in. It's like a spin. Well, ah, got it. nice job. Nice dead job. Yep. That's the way it's done. And there's still some of those fish to be had out on the main stem Columbia. This upcoming segment, we'll talk a little bit about that. It's the Fox 12 app. It's the easiest way to upload photos and videos and just to follow along with what's going on here at KPTV and KPDX. But, of course, out there GPS... Click on it, it'll show you how to upload those photos and videos, and we'll show you off every Saturday and Sunday morning. All right, no calls that are hanging right now. Wake up, everyone. If you got questions or comments, it's the viewer hotline. It's super easy, 503-548-6777. We're going to cut to a break. When we come back, we'll have your weekend uh, field report, how things went for me this week. Burning fuel, boats, uh, chasing birds around, where are they at, find the water, and then pray the ducks will cooperate. I mean, that's the kind of week it's been. But we'll have that when we come back from this break. Don't go anywhere.